In this video, we'll look at the graphical analysis of transistor amplifiers. Here we see again the NMOS amplifier, and on the right, a plot of the drain current flowing through the transistor and resistor RD, plotted versus the drain source voltage. Now, as far as the MOSFET is concerned, the IV relationship will follow one of the blue curves on this plot. Exactly which blue curve it lies on will depend on the applied gate source voltage VGS. We know that in triode, for values of VDS below the overdrive voltage, the IV relationship is governed by this expression. Whereas if we're on the right side of this dashed line, we're in saturation. That's when BDS is greater than BOV. And in that case, we've got our square law. There's the simple square law, but we see here these curves are um, suggesting that some channel length modulation is happening. So to model that, we need the additional term I'll write the full expression here to make sure that the two curves intersect precisely at the transition between triode and saturation. Although you may recall that sometimes we omit this term here. So those expressions capture the blue curves, each one corresponding to a different value of VGS and hence overdrive voltage. However, there's another relationship that governs um, th that relates the drain current ID to VDS, and that's Ohm's law applied to the resistor RD. So the voltage drop across RD is RD times ID, which means that VDS equals VDD minus RD ID. This relationship here captures the linear relationship between current and the voltage across resistor RD. We can plot this relationship on the same axis. The resulting plots a line that we call the load line, and it's shown there in black. So again, as far as the transistor is concerned, the circuit operating point has to lie on the appropriate blue curve Whereas as far as the load line is concerned, the operating point has to lie on the black line. So the actual value of ID and VDS will correspond to the intersection of those two plots. And again, which blue pot we use depends on the specific value of VGS applied. Notice that as VGS increases, we slide up this family of blue curves. And as we do so, the point of intersection will slide up and to the left along the load line. In doing so, we get larger drain currents ID and lower value of VDS. So this is a graphical way to understand the negative gain that we see when the transistor is biased in saturation and we increase the input voltage, this amplifier VGS, and we see the resulting output decrease as the intersection point slides to the left on these plots. So recall that to have a high gain, we want to make sure that the operating mode of the transistor stays in saturation. So to do so, we want to make sure that the intersection point, as we slide back and forth along these blue curves, remains in the saturation region between point A and B. So at one extreme, we can imagine the applied gate source voltage is small. That is, imagine it's less than the threshold voltage. 
of the NMOS transistor. As a result, we know that the transistor would be in cutoff and can therefore be modeled by an open switch as shown here on the right. As a result, zero current would flow through the transistor and hence through the resistor RD and the output voltage VDS would simply be VDD because there's no voltage drop on resistor RD. This corresponds to the point A on this plot on the right. The line at the very bottom is the IV relationship when the transistor is in cutoff. Again, corresponding to any value of VGS less than the threshold voltage. And the point that that line intersects with the load line is obviously at point A, which graphically we can see gives us the output voltage VDD and drain current ID equal to zero that we expect. So this is point A on the graph. The other extreme we can imagine is a very large value of VGS. Let's assume that all voltages are limited by the supply voltage VDD. So the largest value of VGS we may expect is equal to VDD. Now in this case, we can expect a relatively large drain current and as a result, a large voltage drop on the resistor RD, large enough that the transistor will enter triode. So this then corresponds to this top blue curve in the plot on the right. You see in this case that the blue curve intersects the load line at point C. Which is in the portion of the curve representing triode region for the MOSFET. In triode, the MOSFET can be modeled by a resistance, RDS, which is inversely proportional to the overdrive voltage. In this case, the overdrive voltage is the applied value of VGS, which is VDD minus the threshold voltage. Analytically then, we can solve for the output voltage VDS in this case, uh, approximately at least, by using a voltage divider expression. It's a simple voltage division of VDD across the two series resistors RD and the triode RDS. This is a bit of an approximation since this resistor model is accurate only when the transistor is deep in triode, but it's likely pretty accurate in this case with such a large gate source voltage applied. Again, it depends on the specific values of VDD and the threshold voltage. Graphically, we can also solve for it again by just having this plot in the triode region and finding its intersection with our load line, point C. Now that we understand this plot, you can think about the design of this transistor amplifier graphically. Once the transistor is selected, the threshold voltage and value of Kn are determined, and so the shape of these blue plots is determined. At that point, the designer has to make a couple of choices. The value of VGS selected for the operating point and the value of RD. So this amounts to selecting the nominal operating line for the transistor determined by the VGS applied and selecting the slope of the load line by selecting RD. Remember that the slope here is negative one over RD. Now, if you want to ensure that the output voltage VDS remain, you know, is, is 
remains in a range where the transistor is in saturation over the maximum possible voltage excursions, then you might like to select these two uh, values, VGS and RD, in such a way that their intersection, establishing the operating point Q, lies in between the upper limit of the output voltage VDD and its lower limit set by the overdrive voltage that sets the transition into triode. So that would suggest perhaps an operating point somewhere around here, which would suggest a particular value of RD if the value of VGS is as indicated here. But there's trade-offs at play. Notably, if we choose a different value of RD, a larger value of RD moves the load line in this direction, then we would get an operating point, let's say somewhere around Q2. Now clearly the swing available at the output node is much less in this case. As soon as the output voltage drops down by a small amount, the transistor will enter triode and will cease to operate like a linear amplifier. But the larger value of RD does afford a higher gain. You'll notice that it takes a smaller change in VGS here to affect a larger change in output voltage than is the case for, say, the smaller value of RD corresponding to operating point Q1, where changing the input voltage from this blue curve down to this blue curve would result in only a small change in output voltage. So these are some of the trade-offs that have to be made during design. If you favor larger voltage swing, then you might select your operating point somewhere around the middle of this range. A higher gain would suggest that you may want to bias the transistor closer to the verge of triode. We also saw this trade-off when we plotted the input-output voltage transfer characteristic of this amplifier. You may recall that it had three regions cut off and then a saturation region where the square law took hold and in the square law of course the slope becomes steeper and steeper until we enter triode and then the curve flattens out again so this trade-off we're discussing is equivalent to selecting whether we want to choose an operating point around here or one a little bit further up that's more centered within the available output range. Clearly the point at Q2 has a higher slope, thus a higher gain, uh, whereas at Q, uh, the operating point Q, we've got more room to uh, move the input and output voltage back and forth. But what's nice about the graphical analysis on the right is that it has the load line which makes it clear that the way the designer is choosing between those operating points is by selection of the value of RD.